Well, first of all, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I hope I can... I, I've been reading a lot of your other interviews to try to get ready, so I have some questions. Uh, um, growing up, did, did you go to the movies a lot? And if you did, were there any films or filmmakers that really impacted you? Well, growing up, it was uh, not really. Um, not, 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 not as much as I would have liked to. Um, it was only when I was sort of in my late teens that I met this girl who uh, was a girlfriend of mine, and uh, she always was, was putting me into cinema. And it was, it was interesting because she was, she, she was uh, she's Swiss, she was Swiss, and what was interesting for me was that she had this knowledge of world cinema. So I would go, I, normally I wouldn't go, obviously, at that time mm -hmm. my life to sort of French cinema or Italian cinema, but then I, I used to go. Mm -hmm. And that would go sort of broaden my sort of scope, and it was just amazing. It was like uh, entering into, into a new world, mm -hmm. uh, sort of discovery. And it was just, that was amazing. As a as a kid, were you were you have you I mean have you always been sort of artistic? Was when did you first even dabble in film, just as a fun thing? Well, it was, for me, it was more, more, more art. That's how I sort of it was. I could always draw. That was my sort of somehow my salvation yeah. that I could always draw. So you know, always dealing with the frame and the composition and, 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 and the actual images was always something for me which was kind of um, natural. But as far as film was concerned, it was just telling. I told her, it was always television because we had we used to have very good TV in England yeah. um, when I was growing up. So TV was this thing, and it was crazy. It was always watching, always watching it. So when it came to, to the, you know, meeting this, this girlfriend of mine, introduced me to, to, to cinema, which is another expanse of of that sort of discovery, that kind of development. And and as far as your own, um, I know, like you mentioned, obviously uh, you were involved with all sorts of different forms of art. I, I'm Brett. Um, when did you know? When did cinema emerge as the one that you would focus on, sort of in a way, not in, not instead of the others, but just as a lot? I think it's because I want to go into some acting. You know, I think you know that was very sort of uh, how can I say very important for me when, you, when I discovered sort of people like John Cassavetes, uh, when I discovered people. Like Scorsese, what I called discovered people like Fellini, mm -hmm. uh, when I discovered people like Kubrick and so forth, and the actors, the, the acting took over. Yeah. Dan Nicholson, uh, mm -hmm. Brian Brando, of course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Denzel Washington, actors who had a, you know, Gary Oldman, the actors had some kind of sort of um, uh, feeling. Yeah. So that was another discovery, working, I'm working with actors, and, and, and you know, I went to some acting workshops myself. It's sort of, not that I wanted to be an actor, but to, to feel yeah. what it was being like in front of the camera as well as behind the camera. I, um, I had read a little bit about uh, Bear and Deadpan and a few of the early projects that he did, and, it, and maybe, I hope you can explain for people who have not had a chance to familiarize themselves with what they, with what they involved, just... Um, what sorts of films some of those early ones were in terms of what they entailed and where somebody might see them and you know just because it's a it's, it, you wouldn't call it mainstream cinema no but I think that's interesting about film I mean, film is around 120 years old and uh, it's one of those things where you know it's, 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 it's a baby and therefore you know to push narrative you know, like, you know, like that, what, we're, that, you know, what, we're, what we're trying to do as far as hunger, for example, mm -hmm. as far as shame is concerned, because it's, it's a baby. I think audiences are, are stimulated by that kind of introduction to new ideas of, of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of narrative. Um, and just go back on the, to, to the main point. Excuse, excuse, sir. Sir. Sorry, we're just taking an interview. No, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's okay. That, that's okay. So back, I'll, cut, I'll cut that a little okay. bit. We're, we're all set. We're just in the middle of an interview. Yeah, I'm not oh. but... Oh. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. Thanks. Unless you would... I mean, if you... Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, three, three, three cheese? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, okay, where are we going to go? Um, well, okay, so... Did you ask me about... Well, you are just about how it wasn't exactly... Sure, ask me that question one more time, please. Sure. Um, just that the, the early film work that you did, uh, you know, I guess in a way, how would you classify it? And, or, and where, how might somebody... 
you know, how might somebody have seen it? What's like in those two particular instances? They're you know very experimental. What what kind of uh, what kind of you know for somebody who hasn't heard about them yet? What did they involve? Well, um, let me start that question again. Let's jump in. Um, well, it's um, the artwork is very much very different to to, to, to feature film work. Um, it's, again, it's just like anything else, like language. Uh, you know, you, you either write a novel or want to write poetry. And uh, I mean, just for in simplistic terms, I suppose uh, the art work that I do is it's almost like poetry mm -hmm. rather than the novel narrative form. Um, so it's much more um, experimenting with film, really. Um, and I'm doing. Um, there's actual a piece showing in, in the New Museum of Modern Art right now yeah. called Dead Pan, yeah. yeah. and there's a um, there's a, a little bit larger show happening at the AIF AIF at the Art Institute of Chicago mm -hmm. uh, in October of 2012. There's a, a larger show. Um, and so, w as far as now, you know, with hunger, getting into a a more traditional structure of, of feature, you know, mainstream, not mainstream, I wouldn't say, but like a, a feature format, what, was that something you'd always thought you would do or wind up doing, or uh, how did you arrive at doing that? Well, I, I went to NYU uh, to do grad film at NYU in the early 90s, 1993. I was only there for three months, so it wasn't for me. Um, so there was always an idea that I would actually possibly right. make a feature film in, in, in the end. So it was always like, for me it was always in the car, but we all, we all needed a subject matter. And Bobby Sands narrates the story sort of just stayed with me as a kid and then I thought, okay, that's the film I want to make first. As and well as with Shane of course. It yeah. was just a whole idea of sex a sex addiction which sort of fascinated me. That was something which hadn't been really spoken about within sort of a, you know in a written form or, or within film. So it was something which I would really want to sort of um, to, to to a certain and to, and to get to, to grips with the film. Obviously, the the common theme, the common thread between those two films, and and the thing that you probably had to answer more than any other question is just how did how did you first come to uh, Michael for Hunger, and then what clicked between the two of you that made you uh, obviously work so well together that you would want to continue to do those two, and now a, a third film. Well, I met Michael through an audition for Hunger, and at first we. I didn't, I, did, I didn't sort of take to him immediately at all. But on his second visit for the, another audition, he, he just sang, the lights went off in the arm, rather, in the room. And yep. uh, there he was, uh, my first bit of what he said. So it was a commitment. And I think also it was to do with my own naivety of, of audition, auditioning and actors, how much do they give in an audition? Because you get there's so much rejection. And I imagine because he had a second bite of cherry, he sort of, you know, okay, I'll, I'll, give, it, I'll give it a go, I'll do yep. it all. And that was it. So to convince him wasn't so difficult to, to convince him to do Hunger. It was just one of those things where we just got him so well. Excuse me, in shame. It wasn't such a difficulty to convince him for shame. He just got him so well uh, during Hunger that, um, yeah, it was, um, it was an automatic choice for me. I mean, to do the things that, that he had to do for those two films, obviously the first, the physical, uh, you know, uh, advanced work, and then in, the, in this one on screen, that's, that takes, obviously, a, a, I think you'd have to have to tremendously trust and believe in the director's vision, which prior to um, Hunger, I guess, like you said, you know, you didn't know each other. So how how did you arrive at that level of uh, faith in each other that, you know, that so that he would feel able to do those kinds of things that you wouldn't do for just any director? I think mean, respect, really. Yeah. Respect and, and um, uh, some kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. And we like each other a lot, which helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, a real, you know, respect for, for, for what he does. I mean, he has respect for what I do. Yeah. And of course, what we want to do is, I mean, they, is, 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 is to, you know, we need each other to make, to make this film. Just as Terry Mulligan yeah. um, and, um, and Nicole Bahari and, and James Bachelier. You know, I think actors are just, um, you know, for me, the most important thing in the, in the movie. And then we have to sort of make the film. Yeah, of course, we're similar to Sean Barbett and so forth. They all the pieces come together, sound and whatnot. But it's, it's about the actors. When you, after after Hunger, you know, Hunger may not have been seen by the numbers of like a Transformers 3, of course, but it was, I think it was seen by a lot of people who have uh, influence in the film community, and I would imagine you had a lot of options after that film. Why, in some ways, uh, <coughs> pick the, the most difficult subject matter that you could do after, in the sense that exhibit, you know, it's going to be tough for 
exhibit. You, you had to know at the outset that this was going to be a tough thing to deal with as far as exhibitors and uh, distributors and even audiences where just um, getting your movie seen by the world. Was there ever any concern that it might not make it beyond the festival circuit? I mean, was that, did that, does that even bother you? Well, first of all, I think making films is important. I think it, it, it is, it could be, has the potential to be important making movies. Obviously, depending on what you're saying in the movie, what you're trying to communicate in the movies, and I just thought that this subject matter was important because no one was speaking about it. And that I thought the platform of cinema was a platform for this theme to be in. This, 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 uh, this um, how can I call it? This, this subject matter to be in. And uh, that was it. No one was talking about this. It's the ele it, was the ele it is the elephant in the room, <laughs> even now. And it's all around us. And uh, you know, and, you know, anyone who's touched a computer mm. uh, has, has possibly had some contact with, with, with the pornography. Yeah. And uh, it's prolific. And uh, it was this strange thing which was you know around us, but no one was talking about. It. And I thought cinema is important. Uh, it can be important. I just wanted to put it in or onto onto that sort of the uh, onto that print of the cinema, the subject matter. And, uh, and that's the reason why, why I want to make films. Otherwise, you know, if I wanted to make money, I think I'll, I'll be doing a different job. But sure. I think you make, well, if you're lucky, you make money in movies, but um, you know, that's not why I'm making films. But at the same time, you know, just to go to the old saying, if a if a, a tree falls in a forest and no one no one's around, does it make it does it make a noise? You know, if a, if a movie can't, w there was not at all a guarantee that a movie like this, which would probably always be rated an NC-17, right, that it would find a distributor. There weren't there wasn't a lot of precedent for that uh, happening, so it, you were just sort of. You 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 felt comfortable. You know, it's worth the the effort to do it, regardless. One doesn't do it for for. I mean, I'm grateful, of course, that Fox and other people have picked it up and, and response to the movie. I'm, I'm I'm very grateful for that. But you, you don't do it for those reasons. You do it because you think hopefully we'll find an audience. And you know, gratefully, I'm, I'm very grateful that it has. Yeah. Um, but I don't do it for any other reason. And in, in, in just in all the or or excuse me, I don't do it for any other reason other than trying to to do something, otherwise yes. what's the point? Right. You know, as an artist, and or as an actor, or whoever you are, I mean, you know, it, you, there's got to make, you know, of course we've got to pay the bills, but at the same time, I think otherwise, we've got to make a point, otherwise, right. what is the point? And at the end of the day, if you could have, if, if you, if, if it went according to your greatest hope, what would people walk away from shame thinking or feeling differently about the world? I mean, it's good. It's, it's, you know, it's not a case of me dictating to how, how people should feel after I leave the cinema. That's not my... Whoops, today. That's, that's that? okay. No, we'll... Okay, stop. I'll, I'll do it again. No, it's not a problem. Do you want to ask the question one more time? Sure. Uh, oh. Just... <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I heard people saw that I... <laughs> on uh, No, just uh, if, if, if it was up to you, what would people take away from this movie when they leave uh, and look at the world? You know, in what way would they look at the world a little differently? I don't, I don't think I could tell people any, anything that, it, that they don't know already, really. But mm -hmm. all, all, what all an artist can do is actually is, is just sort of uh, you know hold up a mirror. I mean, I, for me, the cinema screen. I always wanted to be a mirror where people are, can see their own reflection. And that's it. That's all you can do as an artist. That's all you can do as a filmmaker. And I guess, in some ways, that's what maybe I, I, I'm curious. Is that why we? You know, he seems, and I think Michael's talked about this in other interviews, that this could be anyone, his character. It's not... And that's it. And it could be anyone. I, mean, yeah. I think people recognize themselves yeah. in Brown. People recognize themselves in Sissy and the characters in, in, in the movie, for sure. I mean, that's why you make it. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not a freak show. You know, I'm not making a, a, something about people which are sort of, sort of strange. It's about you and me, you know. It's a, it's a wee film rather than uh, anything else. There has been a lot, obviously, all kinds of discussions that the film has provoked about, um, you know, a, a wide variety of things. But, but one question that I've heard come up in a lot of places was about the actual nature and the history of the relationship between, uh, you know, Carrie Mulligan's character and Michael Fassbender's character. And I just wonder, um, you know, they're saying, are there hints of incest? Aren't there? You know, what should we? I, I you know, I. I just wonder if you can shed any light on. Well, I, I don't know if I can really, because I think uh, some people's relationship with, you know, their siblings is different to to, to mine or different to yours, different to anyone. So one can't really say if if if, if, if their relationship is incestual 
or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, that's what sure. that question, really. No, no problem. Uh, and then a, a final question about that film is just why New York rather than anywhere else? I mean, it's, it's probably less convenient for you if you're based in sure. London. I mean, it was one of those times, and the reason why, unfortunately, we didn't shoot in London, but in New York, but it's, at the same time, very fortunately, we did shoot in New York, was because at the time there was a big media sort of uh, Ferrari going mm -hmm. in, 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 London, in, in London. Of course, around the time of Tide Woods is sort of. Um, being exposed, um, and I think people were very afraid to talk. I think a lot of people got burnt on the journalists at the time in London, and I think they thought we were, we were you know, basically doors shut, and we couldn't sort of uh, attain any kind of information on people. So we came over to New York to talk to two experts in the field, who then introduced us to people who were suffering with infection and who were obviously a couple of recovering sex addicts. And I just thought to myself, well, 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 we're here. Well, why don't we just sort of uh, make this film in New York. It seemed to make sense, a logical thing to do. And that was it. So that was the starting point through not having access to people's talking to in London. I heard only 25 days was the, the shoot? That's yes, only 25 days. That's pretty... Uh, it seems to me that's a very short amount of time, no, isn't I it? Did, I didn't know it was short. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of so new at this. So right. Is it short? Okay. So, but yeah. you felt... You didn't feel that you guys were under tremendous pressure. You, you Was that okay for you? A good pace? Uh... I don't, again, I don't know what fast is, I don't yeah. know what slow is, yeah. because I, I know, again, I, I'm, I'm new. <laughs> so, again, I didn't know if it was fast or slow. Are we? Are we getting fast? Okay, great. Well, relative to hunger, was it... Was it the was hunger was 24 days. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, again, this is one of those things where, I, again, maybe I should be such a potato chip, we did it too <laughs> I think you should say, like, you know, hey, we should make, you know, make it 50 days, because we could have <laughs> I don't know, I didn't know what it was fast it's, or slow. So it just worked out th that to be that. Yeah, I, again, I, I didn't know what was fast or slow. Just out of curiosity, because it's such a, a visually nice-looking film, and, and all of the rest of the production values. I, I mean, is was is the budget out there? Have you have you talked about that? I was just you know. I think the budget's at five point five and a half million, I think. So and, and is you know some directors say that they feel less comfortable with a with a big budget than they do with a small. How would you how would you feel if somebody said you know would you direct um, a twenty-five million dollar or fifty million dollar movie? Would you you think that you prefer working sort of within the confines of, of a smaller budget? Well, no, I think the next movie I'm doing is, 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 a, is, a, is a larger budget. Mm -hmm. and I think it's the same thing. I thought, of course, what happens then is that obviously there's more people, more people. Think, and it's yeah. all about why he needs more money, not necessarily having money. Right, money. right. So for me, it's a case of, you know, because I'm the kind, kind of guy who is when I actually start, when I make, when I start making films, as a kid, um, you know, there was video cameras around, but I like shooting films, mm -hmm. so I just shoot with 60 millimeter. So it was so expensive then that I used to be so stingy with what I used to, what, what I used to shoot with. I, you know, I wouldn't shoot it, though nowadays even I'm choose you know, 48 hours of footage right. and kind of cuts it down to half an hour. Right, right. I mean, you know, not me. I'm, I'm very careful with what I shoot. <laughs> you know, because it's almost like I'm cutting in my head. So therefore, you know, it's, it's all about budgeting, really. And, and for me, it's, it's, you know, why do I need this money? Maybe I don't. I guess just a corollary to that is, do you, do you feel that actors, do you prefer that they stick very closely to the script, or do you encourage improvisation? Well, a lot of things in Hunger, we yeah. were stuck, we stuck to the script, a lot of things. Wow. Uh, so surprising what people might think, but other times you have to let people be free, because you can, have, you can move them around a certain mm -hmm. dialogue as well, you know. There's a shape, just move around that shape. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, most of the time, for example, a lot of things were stuck perfectly to, that, to, to, to the script, but sometimes you have to allow that sort of uh, sense of surprise. Yeah. I think that's very key. So it's when, when when you do it and when you don't do it. Interesting. And and just the last question is, uh, I think as the film goes into general release, I guess it's next week or the fourth is the the beginning of it. Um, I you know I, I get the sense that it's the kind of movie that could really uh, sort of break through the normal uh, confines of where people who talk about movies. So the you know it's the kind of thing that. Uh, Thomas Friedman or Maureen Dowd or somebody in the New York Times is gonna, I think, latch onto and talk about the issues that you're uh, that you bring up, and I, uh, you know, people like that, and I, I, I just wonder, um, you know, what would your definition of success for this movie be? Is there a box office number? Is there uh, anything? And and then on that ne on your next film, if you can just preview what we'll see you do next. Okay. Success for me is that people are talking about. 
the subject matter. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're provoked by the movie, because the movie is, is one thing, it's great that people, people don't see it, I, I, of course a lot of people don't see it. Mm -hmm. But what's success, success for me is that so by seeing the movie, it provokes conversations. That, you know, oh, you know, big people might start saying, oh, have you seen Shane? What's Shane about? Is that a real thing? Life? Yeah, I mean, and then the, the conversation goes from there. And also, also, to be involved in the conversation, one has to see the film. And I think that's the thing, really, that it takes on another sort of uh, form in itself. Because this is a serious issue, and a lot of people, it's, it's, right now there's a conversation going on, I feel, with sexual addiction, where people are saying, um, you know, sexual addiction is not about being promiscuous, you know. Um, it's about being an addict, you know, uh, a sexual addict. And it's one of those things, you know, you know your, your life can be ruined. I've, I've interviewed people, um, you know, tens of people talking to me about, about how it's ruined their lives. Mm -hmm. So what I would like, what I, I mean, what I would very much like is the conversation is, is, is taken seriously. And where we are right now is a case of people are saying about sexual addiction, it not, it, that it, it doesn't exist. It's almost like people saying the world is flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, we're at this time, uh, and it's also similar to Why Me Be So Bold, when, you know, in the early 80s, when people were, were, were diagnosed with HIV, there's a stigma to people who, who, who claim or, who tell, or actually come out with the idea of them having, a, well, with people having idea of having sexual addiction, there's a stigma attached to them, which is, I think, hugely unfair and wrong, and I think because of, of sex, people are not taking it seriously. Um, and I think that, they're, that, that, that that's a problem because it, of course it is it's an addiction. And yes, guess what? The world is round. <laughs> and and just the part about the, your next film, it, just if you could anything you can preview about that, because I think after this movie, a lot of people are gonna a lot more people than even before are gonna be curious to see. Um, well, the next movie I can't say too much. But it's called Twelve Years a Slave, starring Chiwetel uh, Ejiofor yep. and Brad Pitt and Michael Fassbender. Uh, these are the first three people I've sort of been in the mix of it. And then after that, there's um, obviously more, there's more, more casting right now, we've got other acts and so forth. Um, but it's a bigger one than... It's, it's a much bigger one, of course. So, wow. so, very excited for that. Congratulations on Shane, and thank you so much. Well, for well thank you for, for inviting me. Thank you I very really much. appreciate it.